It is my pleasure to introduce the next talk and the last talk before our morning tea break this morning. Um, we have Lee Rowe and Jacinta Osman joining us, who have been here with us all week in person, and um, they are from the Toi Ohumai Institute of Technology, and I'll tell you briefly about each of them now. Firstly, Jacinta. Uh, Jacinta leads the management of the digital platform at Toi Ohumai Institute of Technology, which is a um, vocational edu education institute based in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Jacinta is passionate about using technology to enhance and enable people's access to information and resources. And I won't tell you too much about um, some of the other things here because I think we're going to talk about them. Jacinta enjoys watching cricket, walking on the beach, pottering in the garden and building large Lego sets with the help of her eight-year-old son. I really love reading these I enjoy things because you just realise how much you have in common with people. <laughs> and for Lee, Lee Rowe. Uh, Lee also works at Toi, Toi Ohomai Institute of Technology and the, um, the library migrated to Koha in 2018, which we'll hear about soon. And Lee is the library manager. Um, she likes spending time with her family, cycling, bushwalks, op shopping reading and playing the piano, things I didn't know about Lee. So please join me in welcoming them for their talk. The title of the talk is Data Data Cup of Tea, Success Factors for a Successful Koha Implementation. Thank you. We're really pleased to be speaking with you this morning and to be part of such a great conference and the friendly Koha community. So hello to all of you uh, around the world. Jacinta and I work together at Toi Ohumai Institute of Technology, which is in the Bay of Plenty region of Aotearoa, New Zealand. And in July 2018, uh, our library at Toi Ohumai went live with Koha, hosted and supported by Catalyst IT. The project was completed on time and on budget, with our senior managers commenting that this was the smoothest IT project that they'd ever been involved with. <laughs> In this presentation, we'll be sharing with you, from a librarian's perspective, why we think it was successful. And we hope that this will be of interest to any of you who are planning to implement Koha, embark on any IT project, or in fact for planning any complex change. Uh, before we start, I'll just give you some brief background on our organisation to give you the context for our implementation project. So um, Toi Ohomai was formed in May 2016 and it was out of the merger of the Bay of Plenty Polytechnic and Wairiki Institute of Technology. The overarching aim of the merger was to better serve the vocational education needs of the wider Bay of Plenty region. The name Toi Ohomai represents our vision to aim high and achieve great heights, to be awakened by learning. Toi Ohmai is home to about 12,000 students, 974 staff, and offers a wide range of programs from certificate to postgrad level. There are two campus libraries, 22 library staff, and an extensive collection of physical and online resources. Uh, as a result of the merger, we ended up with two separate library systems. We had Liberty and Voyager. And we also had two different discovery systems. So EDS, uh, EBSCO's EDS and ProQuest Summon. So we needed a single system to take us forward uh, um, to, uh, as a single institution. 
the time frame for our uh, implementation was only four months. And in that time, we needed to migrate data from two different library systems into Koha, integrate the EBSCO um, EDS plugin. Oh, sorry, I've just um, missed a, a little point um, before I go on. Um, so the situation um, the, with the, all the different systems gave us the opportunity to explore the, explore the whole library systems environment and um, to find a solution to best fit the needs of Toi Oho Mai. We ended up choosing Koha, coupled with EBSCO's EDS Koha plugin, as the best fit for Toi Oho Mai and its community. So yeah, the time frame for our implementation was um, only four months, and in that time we needed to migrate data from the two systems into Koha, integrate the plugin, implement single sign-on, integrate with our student management system, configure our specific requirements, and carry out testing and training. And on top of that, because of the merger, there was a lot of associated change happening. Um, we needed to align our circulation um, policies and our collection policies, and also support our staff who were getting used to uh, working in the new environment, new, new culture, um, and um, being in, in new, new or changed roles. So for us, um, it was a, a complex change process. And in preparing for this presentation today, we came across um, the NOSTA model for managing complex change, which describes five elements for effective change. And in considering this model, we realised that our project had had a good balance across all those five elements and we think that's why um, the, the pro we had such a good outcome. The five elements are vision, skills, incentive, incentives, resources, and an action plan. And this is a visual representation of the NOSTA model, which some of you may be familiar with. So on the, uh, the top right, oh sorry, on the top um, row, we have the five elements, vision, skills, incentives, resources, and an action plan. And if we have all of those in place, um, we're going to have success. And if we're missing any of the elements, um, we will um, might end up with some of the um, results or outcomes on the, that are on the right-hand right column in the purple. So, for example, if we're missing an action plan, um, that's the, the grey bit, in the blue column, we may have false starts. If we're missing resources, that's the grey bit in the resources column, we may end up with frustration. And if we're missing incentives, uh, that's in the, that middle column, I don't know what colour that is, sort of a khaki colour, we're missing, uh, we will, might end up with resistance. And if we're missing skills, we may end up with anxiety. And lastly, if we're missing vision, there may be confusion. Well, there's yeah, highly likely to be confusion. So we're now going to look at each of those elements um, a little more and discuss how they contributed to our successful project. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about vision, and then I'll pass you over to Jacinta for um, the other four elements. So the first element uh, is vision. And having a strong vision is really important for managing complex change successfully, as it provides clarity and guidance. And without this, confusion may reign. And before we began our um, search for a new library system, we spent a lot of time thinking about Toi Ohomai's vision and how that could be embodied in a, in a new library system. Um, and the student experience was at, at the heart of this. Um, and our vision is to to see um, this in the picture, this happening, our students graduating, being proud and going on to serve their communities. Um, and from this thinking, we developed a set of objectives for the project. These also incorporated core library principles around the accessibility of knowledge, the open sharing of resources, and the respect for the rights and privacy of people and their data. 
Um, these objectives informed our tendering process and we evaluated responses from suppliers based on these. And students were involved in this process, attending vendor demonstrations and providing feedback from a student perspective. Uh, using these objectives and the evaluation, we decided that Koha was the best fit for our organisation. So the focus and time that we put in at the start to clearly identify our vision and objectives not only helped with choosing the best system, but helped to guide the implementation of the project throughout. And the, yeah, the objectives helped because they were really clear to us, um, and they also helped us with making difficult decisions, uh, as we could refer back to them to help us decide. And at the same time, um, this work helped develop the emerging culture of our team. Having a clear vision that we could share with the team helped us navigate through the ups and downs of the merger process. Now I'm going to hand over to Jacinta to talk about the next four elements of planning a successful change. Kia ora tato. Uh, the next element in NOSTA's model is incentives, and this is all about motivation for change. We needed strong incentives to introduce a new library system which would substantially change many of the processes that our library staff were used to. People need a reason to get behind a change, and we had some good ones. A major incentive was that our one of our legacy library systems was very outdated and holding us back from providing the library services that we wanted to. A new library system would pr allow us to manage our electronic resources more easily and it would have a user interface that was from the 21st century rather than the 1990s. We wanted to provide a better student experience. Throughout the project, our library continued to use our two existing library systems, which meant duplicating work on both systems. Our library staff were spending a lot of time on this duplication, and so having just the one system was definitely a big incentive for us. We would also save money by having just the one system, which was an important factor for getting support for the project from senior management. We were excited about moving to a system that used open source code, yay. The flexibility that open source provides is a refreshing change after years of using proprietary library systems from global companies where the needs of a relatively small academic library in New Zealand were always overlooked in favour of the needs of large American libraries. We wanted a library system that would reflect Aotearoa New Zealand, and in particular one that embraced Te Reo Māori seamlessly. Koha's Te Reo interface gave us a great opportunity to do this. And as a project team, we took time to acknowledge each other's successes and celebrate each milestone of the project. These moments were important because they reassured us that we were doing well and making progress on what at times seemed to be an enormous project. So resources are another key factor in NOSTA's model. In this case, it's about having the time, money, staff and equipment to carry out the change. For us, the merger work stream had identified the need for a single library system, and there was an allocated budget for this, so we had the financial support to run a successful project. Having great relationships had really helped in the success of this implementation. For example, having a good relationship with our in-house IT team helped us to overcome any tricky issues during the project. An informal relationship with Catalyst IT had been built up from chatting at various library conferences and events over a number of years. And Catalyst already provided support for Toi Ohomai with Moodle, Mahara and Drupal. So by choosing Koha, we were building on an already meaningful and effective partnership. 
We were lucky enough to work with a project manager and we found her support priceless. All of us on the project team were expected to carry on our normal jobs, of course, as well as working on the implementation. And having a project manager to focus on the admin side of the project was fantastic. Our project manager, Tess, set up any meetings we had, wrote reports on our progress, and gently reminded us of forgotten tasks. Throughout the project, we were overseen by a governance team made up of three people from senior management. We reported weekly to them on our progress and outlined any issues or risks that we had identified. This gave comfort to senior management that we were on track and in return, we knew that we had their support throughout the project. Finally, there were two major resources for our project that weren't allow, outlined in any of our reports, but that were essential to the success of the project. Caffeine and snacks. So lots of cups of tea and coffee and home baking were consumed in meetings, user testing and celebrating the outcome. We highly recommend copious amounts of both to ensure a successful project. So for any successful change project, you need to make sure that everyone involved has the necessary skills to carry the project through to completion. We found it vital to have someone who knew the metadata in our existing library systems inside and out, for example, a cataloger familiar with Mark. Knowing how your data is structured in your current system will help you to ensure that the right information is mapped across to the right places in Koha. It also helps to run some checks on your metadata before you start the project because there might be clean up jobs that need to be done before you migrate the data across. Choose a project team that has a mix of thinking styles and skills. You need someone who can think strategically, who can see the bigger picture and look at what's best for your customers and the institution, not just what works for library staff. You also need someone who's good with the details and who's going to notice when small but important things are slipping through the cracks. As most countries have learned in 2020 with the global pandemic, listen to the experts. Explain what you want and then, and this is the kicker, trust the advice they give you. This is where it really helps to have built a solid relationship with your IT team or your vendor that is assisting with the installation. Most importantly, a sense of humour and empathy within the project team helps to smooth the tricky moments and make it an enjoyable and satisfying project. We were lucky enough to have all of these skills covered in our project team. And uh, just before you go on, Jacinta, in the interest of accessibility, the picture here on the screen shows one of our um, carpentry students with, I think it's a nail, nail, nail gun. gun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> build, build, building one of our, um, building a house that we um, then go on and, and sell in the community. So, action plan. You can have all the vision, incentives, resources and skills in the world, but you won't get anywhere without a detailed action plan. It needs to clearly outline what needs to be done and when it needs to be done by. No one on our project team had any previous experience of merging two library systems into one, so we took a lot of guidance from Catalyst, who had ample experience in this area. Again, it was a case of trust the experts in deciding what needed to be done. As the project team were expected to carry on business as usual, as well as work on the project, we found that using systems helped to keep us on track. We used a relatively simple spreadsheet register that recorded tasks to be done, decisions made, and any risks or issues that needed to be reported to our governance team. We considered using specific project management software, but as none of us had ever used such software before, we thought it would be simpler to just stick to a spreadsheet, and it worked fine. We were working to a fairly tight time frame of needing to merge the two systems and launch Koha within four months, so sticking to the deadlines was crucial. 
This is where our project manager really helped. At our weekly meeting, review meetings, she would metaphorically give us a kick up the butt if we'd missed a deadline. Doing lots of testing was crucial to a successful launch of Koha to our staff and students. We wrote and used a testing plan that was so effective that we still use it today for testing any major updates installed on Koha. We also asked students and academic staff to be involved with the testing and, the, and they provided feedback on the user interface, particularly around the usability and navigation of the OPAC site. We then made tweaks to the interface based on their suggestions. One vital part of our action plan was staff training. It was easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day busyness of getting everything ready for launch, but a key part in the success of the project relied on training our library team so that they felt as comfortable as possible using Koha from day one. This also meant that our library staff were able to help staff and academic student, um, students and academic staff to learn how to use Koha after it was launched. And yes, we've got a photo there of our students looking at how to build a house, I suspect, or a construction site. So that covers off our five elements of NOSTA's model and how they were reflected in our project. I'm now going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges and the successes we had. So looking back at the project, um, we identified some, some big challenges and successes. The biggest challenge of the project was managing scope creep. This is where the original scope of the project gets bigger and bigger and bigger after the project begins as people come up with new deliverables and ideas to be added in. Throughout the project, we came up with lots of ideas for additional features that we could implement. It was tempting to add these to our project, but we always reviewed these ideas in relation to the time frame, the budget and the staff resources that we had. Some of these ideas were assigned to phase two, which kept us focused on phase one. In other words, what we needed to achieve to be ready for launch. Another challenge was the data integration phase of the project. The data in one of our systems was not in pure MARC format, and so for librarians out there, you know how challenging that can be sometimes. It needed a lot of tidying up and tweaking to enable smooth mapping across to Koha. What was our biggest success? We believe that the relationships we had built with students, academic staff, our in-house high tea team and Catalyst were the most important factor for the success of our project. Taking advantage of these relationships meant that we had input from all of our stakeholders especially and most importantly from our students. As Lee has already mentioned, a positive student experience is at the heart of everything we do. And this project was never going to be a success unless it met the needs of our students. I'll now pass things back to Lee to sum up. So yes, just in summary, um, we're, we're very proud that our Koha implementation was on budget on, on deadline. Uh, we are also proud that two years on from launch, we have a world-class culturally responsive system and students and staff enjoy using Koha and picked up how to use it really quickly and easily. Uh, although we didn't know about the NOSTA model uh, before we began our project, in re retrospect, our planning included all of the five elements um, of the model for yeah, to, that led to effective change. The cups of tea and um, the relationships were just as important as having the data skills in a project budget. In fact, I'd say the cups of tea and the relationships were the most satisfying and rewarding part of, of the, the project. We won't say that the project was completely without any challenges. There were many. But by having all of these elements covered in great relationships, we were able to work through any issues without too much difficulty. 
Um, and as I said before, this model can be applied to any project or change process, regardless of the goal or whether it's IT related or not. Uh, so just to finish off, what's next for us? Uh, we'd love to collaborate more with other libraries using Koha. Uh, we've started working with Wintech. Uh, hello to colleagues at Wintech if you're watching, who they've also implemented Koha recently. And one thing we'd like to do is conduct, conduct research on um, how the Te Reo Māori interface is being used by students and the impact it's having. Uh, and also, um, a big thing that's happening for us at the moment is the vocational education sector in Aotearoa, New Zealand, is currently undergoing a major transformation. With all of the institutes of technology and politics, that's 16 of them, and all of the industry training organisations being brought under the uh, one umbrella of um, Te Pukenga, the New Zealand Institute of Skills and Technology. Um, Te Pukenga has been created to provide more sustainable, flexible and accessible learning for our students. The government expects the staff of Te Pukenga to embed equity for Māori learners in its culture, delivery and outcomes. And when the time is right, we would love to see Koha being adopted across the whole new institution. <laughs> Fingers crossed, <laughs> as we can see that it's a solution that would be a, a perfect fit for Te Pukinga's vision. And just before we go, I'd just like to uh, acknowledge all of our toy or my colleagues back at home. Hi, everyone. Um, the seriously amazing Koha team at Catalyst and all of you in the Koha global community. Uh, and thank you for sharing your expertise in many different ways and for your support and kindness. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.